So hi there and welcome to this uh, relatively quick video where we're going to take off, make a round here around Halifax airport and uh, land on an ILS runway here, ILS runway 14. So we'll take off here, make a right hand turn, line up for ILS runway 14 without anything set up. Uh, it's good practice for hand flying and uh, we're going to see how this is going to work out. Uh, so we need to set up an ILS frequency to get aligned there. Going to spool up the engines here already, take off and then we'll go for the rest here. Right, full thrust here. Got the other brakes set at our uh, RTO, which is on a default uh, when you start the plane here on the runway. Landing lights are on, stuff like that. So it's just a nice uh, practice run here. We're going to do it quickly. All right. Okay, positive rate of climb, gear up, flying flight director here, start retracting flaps back to 5, need to pitch down here just a little bit to keep gaining airspeed, there we go, flaps back to 1 and we're passing the flaps 1 setting here. Like I said, we're not worried about the ATC, so we're not going to talk too much here with ATC. Just going to leave it as it is. Um, Want to come up on the heading here, because we need a stable flight going on, going 5,000 feet, which will be enough. All flaps away at 5, 5,000 feet, and a speed of 200 and something. Doesn't matter that much. Uh, other throttles armed. Gonna engage the autopilot. Gonna hold heading mode. Gonna switch on vertical speed and keep climbing here towards the 5000. So we're flying full autopilot here now. Uh, that's a notification that 5000 feet is already coming up here very soon. Uh, so we have a nice stable flight coming up here. It's a nice, nice climb here. Um, departed from Halifax. Now I wanna make a round turn here. Come around and line up for ILS runway 14. If you zoom in all the way. You can see the runway number, so if you're practicing this on any ra random runway, you can see this is 5. Coming up here, you can see it's 14. You have to look a little bit carefully, but 14. So I wanted to come around, and we got a nice approach here, which we can fly to, ICTAT, or not, not an approach, but we can use to aim more or less to line up towards 14 there. Um, we're getting quite some distance here already. Want to switch this one to maximum bank angle? Auto should be fine as well, but why not going to turn to max? This is north, this is east, south, west, so we can come to west, which is 270 already at least. 270, oh, 270, there it is. So it gives us a westerly uh, course, then we can fly north and then fly towards this uh, ICTAT. <coughs> Coming towards the west here, 270. And then soon I think we can start proceeding northerly. North, yeah, let's come north. Alright, this is my first attempt from Halifax. I'm trying different airports all the time, so we'll do this one together here for the first time. Oh, come on. 360 or 000. Alright, that's it. Now we need a ILS frequency and a course. So we simply select the airport, come down here, ILS 14. We got a course and our frequency. And 747, we cannot set up in the uh, NAV radio or something here, like with the 737. So we have to come over here to the FMC, go to NAV radio page, and notice here where ILS is uh, marked park. So we're gonna pick the frequency, which is 109.10. Just like that, and you want to add a dash for the heading or the course, which is 142. Press it in there, and notice the frequency together with the course selected manually here. Uh, if you're flying towards an airport, you got a full full route set up. I have a very nice tutorial flying full route uh, set up. It's uh, it's coming up automatically um, if you select an approach uh, airport and a corresponding runway. So still quite a while to go here. I wanted to say this is north, but it's not, because if we're flying 360, which is north, like this, 
then this map looks like not north orientated. Anyway, doesn't matter. Coming this direction, <laughs> more or less, what we can do is zoom out a little bit. Uh, not data. That one, yes. Ignat, there it is, Ignat, that's the one we want. So all we're gonna do is turn the heading block towards Ignat, more or less. Just like so. And we got two back behind it, which is like that. So if we align towards Ignat, or let's say a little bit towards the left of it, gives us a little bit more room, come in here, and then approach via Ignat towards the uh, the Halifax. Ah, yeah, that's runway 14 right there. Um, we can go for an ILS approach by switching on the, locali the, the localizer and then turning to approach and all the all the other nice good stuff here and make it a full outer land. Um, 14 from Halifax I was checking is not too long, um, but it's good practice for hand flying. So what are we gonna do here is I have not been hand flying with 747 that much, so small disclaimer right there, <laughs> but I like practicing it, uh, hand flying it. So uh, we're gonna do it, uh, hand fly it, the approach and landing and then we've got to keep an eye here because the airport is coming up soon with the speed of 250 so we're gonna drop that speed down to 220 gives us a little bit more breathing room right there and what I like to do as well turn down the brightness here a little bit just like so makes it easy to spot the runway later on and the airport um, which is like expect to be flying right over yeah so yeah that's happening as well if you make flights like this you underestimate the whole approach quite easily um, and I'm gonna keep recording this and I'm gonna keep making this video because it's happening and it's normal and it's completely fine so we're gonna turn away a little bit here from the airport which we can see on the um, ND here as well, so we're gonna fly away with it and then come in and make an approach properly there. Gonna come down to 3000 feet. I still, I, I keep underestimating this map. You think, oh, miles away, we got plenty of room. No, no, no. Don't think like that. <laughs> gonna come down to 3000 feet, just not too, you know, not too fast. Right, then we're gonna. Lower the speed there to flaps 5, which gives us the slats together with the first setting of flaps. Um, slats are the ones which are coming out here in front of the plane. These ones are flying with nice British Airways uh, livery here. Alright, back to the cockpit. So we're getting quite some distance here now from Halifax again. So we're coming back to all the way around. Ignat was just on the ND there. So I'm gonna keep turning towards there. And that gives us a nice visual towards runway 14. I'm gonna set speed for flaps 5 setting here. We are on 5, you can notice here on the There's our altitude already, our glide slope already there. Want to capture normally the localizer before the glide slope, so you gotta keep an eye on that one. Gonna come down on the speed a little bit more, go to flaps 10. I'm gonna try spot the runway. There it is. Alright, good. Now we have a nice visual here. And the approach wise, we're looking good as well. Turn down, oh, this map we don't need anymore. Turn down the brightness on the panel here just a little bit more. Alright, slow down more. Start dumping these flaps down. And the gear on the 737. Landing. Yep, Landing. gear is coming down, buddy. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Set the auto brakes Landing for gear. three, four. Landing gear is down, yep. 2500. Can press FA to go to full flaps. And then we're gonna disengage the autopilot. Start flying here manually.
want to follow this uh, altitude glide slope already. Can acknowledge the warning from the autopilot disengagement right there. And then I gotta keep an eye on the localizer later on as well. Gotta start banking to the left slowly. Localizer should be coming up any moment soon. There we got the localizer. Start turning in more. So just like I said, I'm not the real airline pilot, as you might notice already. <laughs> but it's great practice. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I don't know how long we're flying now. 10, 15 minutes, something. And we're already lining up for a runway landing here. Great practice. Alright. Yeah, if we switch on the localizer, the flight director will align even a little bit better there. There you go. So now we got a clear view on the actual runway can turn up the brightness again a little bit makes it more interesting than all this darkness going on you gotta keep an eye on the speed here a little bit pitching up a little bit what i'm still not used to is the the actual you're sitting really high in the 747 it's a high plane so i tend to i have the feeling like okay still a long way to go and then it's like 50 40 30 20 and then it's like okay we're already there so that's something which i still have to get used to One thousand. No poppy lights. Makes it a little bit harder. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. That's the problem with having only one yoke. I'm gonna go reverse gear. Don't press the gears because it will disengage the auto brake. Notice I press the gear there, the brake, and it disengages the auto brake. So don't press the gears. Don't feel the temptation to brake a little bit extra. And as you can see, it's a relatively short runway. But we should be able to manage or not. Ah, I disengaged the auto brake there. I think that's what, what was. That's pity, that's pity. Still made it some way. <laughs> I, I for sure if we would be touched down just a little bit earlier and I would not this show show what happens <laughs> if you press the brakes, then we would be able to make the exit there for sure. Press dash on the numpad. Brings down the speed brakes, press F5, which will bring back all the flaps. And we can reverse thrust our way a little bit backwards here. So I'm feeling I'm I, I'm I'm standby for the comment section already here. <laughs> for all the comments. Like ah this and this and this, but the whole idea here is to just have a short takeoff, like a quick takeoff, fly around an airport with an ILS runway, have all the traffic switched off and just practice a nice approach. That's the whole idea and that it's like approach page is not set up and stuff like that and maybe it was too high approach too low uh, maybe the I was I was banking left and right like crazy on the approach that's all fine you can comment on it um, 
like I said, I don't fly the 747 so often. It's been one of the first times again. Um, just like the 747 a lot. I want to get better with it. And this is my way of doing it. And I decided to share it with you so you can get better flying the 747 as well. Flying the LNAV line for two hours doesn't make you better at flying the 747. So this is a quick way to get better. And you simply press restart, do it all over again. And you will know already how to find the runway better. Don't have to make all kind of big turns. Just uh, yeah, I wanted to share this one with you guys. Um, if you like this kind of videos, please consider subscribing. Really likes it, appreciate it. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for the ones who are already. Um, yeah, it's nice. And uh, for the rest, enjoy your flight, and see you in the next one.